In this lesson, we'll cover basic information about Active Directory, or AD sites. Active Directory uses forests, trees, and domains to represent the logical layout of the network. It uses sites and subnets to represent the physical layout of the network. Organizing the network physically into sites allows you to balance traffic flow and timing of replication traffic. It also ensures that users are directed to local resources. Let's look at how sites are designed to fulfill these purposes. Sites are set up to mirror the physical environment. A site is a group of resources in the same physical location. Sites are typically separated by a WAN link. Here we have physical offices in Portland, Denver, and Chicago. Each of these locations are connected through a WAN link, and each location has been set up as an Active Directory site. Each site is a physical grouping of IP subnets connected with high-speed links. A subnet is a grouping of computers based on IP address or physical network segment. Each subnet possesses its own unique network address space. When a computer boots, Active Directory uses the computer's IP address to assign it to a site. In this way, clients are directed to resources within their own site. You must define the IP address within sites and services and associated with the corresponding site. The computer also must be assigned the correct IP address for its location. Active Directory sites are used to control replication traffic. A domain controller in a site is immediately replicated to another domain controller within the site. That DC replicates the update to the next DC and so on until all the DCs in the site are updated. At a scheduled interval, a designated DC in the site, called a bridgehead server, replicates the updates to a bridgehead server in each of the other sites. The bridgehead servers connect through site links that are matched with WAN links. Each of the bridgehead servers replicate to the other DCs in their sites. The replication within a site is called intrasite replication, and the replication from one site to another is called intersite replication. The site links represent the logical paths that the Knowledge Consistency Checker, or KCC, uses to establish the inner site connectivity for Active Directory replication. The KCC is a Microsoft Server component that automatically generates and maintains the inner site and intrasite topology. For KCC to work properly, you first need to manually set up the sites and subnets. By default, Active Directory creates a site called Default Site First Name when a forest is created. All domain controllers are in this default site when the forest is organized. If a network is small and in one location, this one default site may be all you need. If the network is larger and has multiple locations, like our previous example, you'll need to manually create sites. So, let's say that Portland is the home office. You could change the original site from default site first name to Portland. You could then create two additional sites, a Denver branch office and a Chicago branch office. Once you have the site set up, you then create the needed subnets and associate them with their corresponding sites. Next, you create site link objects to mirror the WAN links and assign costs to the site link objects. You assign costs to control how replication happens on the pathways. You manipulate the path of replication by assigning a higher or lower cost value to a site link object. KCC will choose the lowest cost path. Another concept to understand with sites is the try next closest site group policy setting. If a client computer needs to locate a domain controller, it'll look in its own site first. If a domain controller isn't found, let's say because the domain controller failed, the client computer searches randomly for a domain controller in other sites. To ensure that client computers find the closest or fastest domain controller, you can enable the Try Next Closest Site Group Policy setting. This setting isn't configured by default. You'll need to manually configure it. In this lesson, we looked at how you can use Active Directory sites to manage replication traffic and to make sure client computers are referred to local resources. Then. We talked about how intrasite and intersite replication work and the part that the knowledge consistency checker plays in that process. We discussed the configuration of sites, subnets, and site links and how you can control traffic flow by assigning certain costs to the site link objects. We finished this lesson by talking about the try next closest site group policy 
and how enabling it can help a network run more smoothly.